repent and believe in the gospel. It's Lenten Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a selection of Don Bosco. Come back to the Lord with all your heart. Stay tuned. Come back to me. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It is Sunday, the 13th of March, 2022, second Sunday of Lent. And second Sunday of Lent is known in the church as Transfiguration Sunday. Just as we have the first Sunday of Lent as Temptation Sunday, going through temptations, the desert of temptations. Once you have learnt going through the desert of temptations, by listening to the word of God, quoting scripture and living by it, listening to God, you reach the mountain of transfiguration. The place where you want to remain forever, the place where you meet God. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Priscilla Chitio from Harare, Zimbabwe, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the first reading. Sylvester Sanyali Bukari from Naleriju, Ghana, who celebrated his birthday on the 6th of this month, takes for us the responsorial psalm. Mabel Chasumba from Johannesburg, South Africa, who celebrates her birthday today, takes for us the second reading and proclaiming for us the gospel is Father Fidelis in Zioka from Lordwa Diocese in Kenya. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word that with the spiritual sight we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen! First reading. God enters into a covenant with the faithful Abraham. A reading from the book of Genesis. Genesis 15, verse 5 to 12. 17 to 18. In those days, God brought Abraham outside and said, Look towards heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord. And he reckoned it to him as righteousness. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a she-god three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he brought all these cut them in two, and laid each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abraham. And behold, a dread and great darkness fell upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoking firepot and a flaming torch passed between those pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river your friends. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. 
Psalm chapter 27, verse 1, 7 to 8b, 8c to 9a, b, c, and 13 to 14. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my light, light and, and my salvation. salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? The, the Lord, Lord is, is my light and, and my salvation. O oh Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer me. Of you my heart has spoken. Seek his face. The, the Lord is my light and my salvation. salvation. It is your face, O oh Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face from me. Dismiss not your servant in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon or forsake me. The, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my light and my salvation. salvation. The second reading, Christ will change us to be like his glorious body. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 3 verse 17 to chapter 4 verse 1. Brethren, join in imitating me and mark those who so walk as you have an example in us. For many, of whom I have often told you, and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and they glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our commonwealth is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power which enables him even to subject all things to himself. Therefore, my brethren, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in this way in the Lord, my beloved, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke chapter 9, verse 28b to 36. At that time, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his countenance was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men talked with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus, which he was to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but he kept awake. And they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is well that we are here. Let us make three bowls one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As he said this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silence and told 
no one in those days anything of what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us start with the first reading of today that will introduce to us what we are focusing on today. Every year on the second Sunday of Lent, we take a passage from the book of Genesis about Abraham. Today we are focusing on chapter 15 of the book of Genesis. Abraham, whose story starts from chapter 12, is about 75 years of age when the message of God comes to him. He has gone through a lot. He has waited for the promises of God to take place in his life. He has become rich. He has acquired a lot of wealth, but he had a worry. Who will inherit all that I have if God doesn't give me somebody to take over from me once I am gone? My own blood. He had a lot of things going on in his mind when God decided to make a covenant with him. We are told God brought Abraham outside and said, Look outwards, heaven, and number the stars. It was at night. Remember, night represents despair. Night stands for the forces of darkness. Night stands for pessimistic outlook. And night is a time when even our immunity is at its lowest. And that is why many people become more sick. Those who are sick become more sick at night. At that time, when things are gloomy, when things are dark, God takes out Abraham and says to him, don't look at the darkness that is around you. No, look at the stars of heaven. Look up. I want you to improve the way you look at things. And I want you to look up. He tells him, and number the stars. If you are able to number them, then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. Oh my word. He, at the moment of despair, when he was about to give up, and at a time he was meant to give up, he stood to look up. <laughs> I love this. I love this word. He stood to look up, and he stood, number those stars, which he cannot. He has been numbering his problems. He can count the problems he has been having. He can even let people know what he has been going through with his wife, Sarah. He can tell them when he got frustrated. He can tell them everything. But God is saying, yes, you have been numbering your problems, but I want to tell you what I'm going to do to you will not be numbered. What I'm going to do to you will not be counted. Just learn to look up. You have been looking down for too long. Learn to look up and you are going to see innumerable blessings from above. That's what God does. And you know what? Something happened in the life of Abraham and he believed the Lord. Understand this. Believing somebody is not just knowing that somebody exists. No, this is faith. Faith is deeper than knowledge. Faith is the conviction of something that you are not having in sight and knowing that it is a case. That is the faith that Abraham had. He believed and because he believed the Lord and he reckoned it to him as righteousness, it is faith. That is the beginning of all the best things that you can think of having in the world. It is faith that restores hope. It is faith that restores all that you think will not happen and it happens. It is faith that restores the health that you never thought you could have. It is faith that restores joy. In the things you think will never work, but actually do work in life. Faith restored optimism in Abraham. 
And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. Remember before this passage, Abraham was taught to leave his own people, his own country, and go to the land of Canaan, the land of promise. Now, because he believed, because he had that faith in God, he had that confidence in God, a covenant was made between him and God. And look at the details of this covenant. Bring me a heifer three years old, a she-goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Let us see here. We have how many animals? We have three animals and two birds. Okay, let us see here. The number three stands for perfection, completeness. And we have three animals here, three of each. The number three stands for completeness. And look at this. There are three animals, complete, and three of each, completely complete. <laughs> look at this. It is a complete, a perfect, a perfect covenant. And it is sealed by two birds. The number two stands for witness that what I'm going to do to you is evidenced by this number of two dove and pigeon, these two birds, to tell you that what I am going to do with you will be something with evidence. It will be seen in the years to come that indeed our God fulfills promises. So it is real. What I'm going to do to you, Abraham, and with you is real. Now, let us get back to tradition. What used to happen when families got into a pact, got into a covenant, they would do exactly what Abraham is doing with God. They would bring their animals, cut them into quarters. So four parts. And then put them there. Then they would walk in between the cut pieces. As they walked in between the cut pieces, they would say these words. What has happened to this animal? May it happen to me if I break the covenant. May I also be cut into pieces. But let us see if Abraham also did that. And when the birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, and he brought him all these, cut them in two, and laid each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abraham. And behold, a dread and great darkness fell upon him. Wait a minute. He did not walk over those pieces. No, he did not walk over them. God made a covenant with Abraham without conditions. Because you see, when humans, as I have explained, would make covenant with each other, they would walk in between the carcasses and then pronounce the words, if I don't follow this, let what has happened to these animals also happen to me. But it did not happen between God and humanity. Why? Because our God makes a covenant with us with no conditions. Our God blesses us with no conditions. That is why we should stop believing in these chain messages that come on social media to distract our faith and bring fear in us. God has no conditions when he's blessing us. Oh, if you pass this, you will have luck. You will get a lot of riches and all that from Father Mba or something. It's a lie. No priest can even think like that. And if you have been afraid and you have been trying to pass it on because you are afraid to get any curses, you won't get any curse for passing on a message. Our God is a God of no conditions. 
Look at what happened to Abraham to show him that it is all God at work. A deep sleep came into him. A deep sleep that occurred in the book of Genesis at the beginning of creation in chapter 2 of the book of Genesis. When God was creating a woman, he put a man into a deep sleep so that a man has no claim after this that he was the one involved in this. It is all God at work. That deep sleep signifies it is all God at work. Not Abraham at work, but God at work in that covenant. And God will fulfill that covenant. And that deep sleep is what is telling us to get into, to understand that even when we don't understand certain things, God is fulfilling his plan in us and he will fulfill that plan. Jesus is here to understand the plan of his father. He takes his disciples who also did not understand what Jesus came to do. He takes them up on a high mountain. And what we are told is that he went there to pray. Luke explains to us what Jesus went to do. He went to pray. He went to consult his dad. He wanted to understand the plan God had, his father had, in his ministry. A lot of things had happened around that time. Jesus had been misunderstood. He had been called Beelzebul. He had been seen as mad by his own people, by his own friends. And so somehow he started looking at his work and saying, am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right track? You know, we may be doing a lot of things in life, but there is a moment where we feel like we are not doing what we are supposed to be doing. There is a moment where we find ourselves as ministers of God's word, as ministers working for God. We find ourselves questioning, am I on the right track? And the only thing that can put us in perspective is prayer. Getting back to consult our dad and asking, am I doing what I'm expected to do? where you feel a lot of discouragement, where you feel a lot of things around you, you go out and face God in the dark and let him reveal to you what his plan is in your life. That is exactly what Jesus did. And to the disciples who were fighting for authority, to the disciples who didn't understand what God wanted to achieve in Jesus, the same message was delivered to them. They went with Jesus on the mountain, James, Peter, and John, in order for them to understand whom they were following. And what we see is that uh, as he was praying, the appearance of his countenance was altered. It was changed. As he was praying, something changed. He somehow came to understand the plan of his father. He somehow came to understand the purpose for his coming on this earth. When you are praying, something changes about your character. Not the world out there changing. It's you changing. Many things may not work out in prayer. But one thing you must know, as you are praying for something to change, you change yourself. That is exactly what happened to Jesus. As he was praying, his face changed. It was altered. And behold, two men talked with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus. It is only Luke who explains to us what they were talking about, that it was about exodus coming from a journey from this place to that place, the exodus of the people of Israel was from Egypt to the promised land. The exodus of Jesus was from this world to the land of promise, heaven itself. And they were telling him he's going to go back to his dad. He has to do that through death. He has to suffer for it. And the disciples Peter, James, and John were listening to this, but they got into sleep. The sleep similar to that of Abraham, but the one of Abraham was a total submission to God's will, allowing God to have it all. 
The sleep of Peter, James, and John was a sleep of not wanting to know what was happening there. Not wanting to hear of any suffering, any exodus that Jesus was discussing with Moses and Elijah. They didn't want to hear about that. No, they wanted the comfort and joy of being in that environment and not to go back to the pains and troubles of life. They were enjoying so much that when everything was done, Moses and Elijah having disappeared because Jesus now becomes the perfect fulfillment of scripture of the Old Testament that there is no understanding of the Old Testament without understanding Christ. Christ is the fulfillment of the Old Testament because Moses and Elijah represent the Hebrew scriptures. The Pentateuch and the historical books and the wisdom literature with the prophetic literature combined make up the Hebrew scripture, the Old Testament. And these two men represent that. And when they disappeared, the voice came, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. He was alone there. And what we see, Peter who did not understand anything said, Master, it is well that we are here. Let us make three boots, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. It is well we are here, yes. It is well we are here in this context of prayer, in this context of the retreat where we are with the Lord and we want to forget about everything else that troubles us, but we have to understand, no. We can't make three tents. We have to go back to life to face those challenges, to face the exodus, to face the pains of life. And we will do that because we are listening to him, the beloved. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. We listen to him through his word where we learn that indeed life is about accepting the pains and challenges that we face today and realizing that to follow Christ, we must learn to follow the cross of Christ. We must learn to follow him even in his pain. We must learn to follow him even in his disappointments. Those moments that we get disappointed in life, those moments that we get broken in life, should not make us stop following the path of Christ. No, we are not enemies of the cross, as the second reading of today tells us. The enemies of the cross are those people who focus more on the joys, the enjoyment of life, and they forget that part of sacrifice. They forget that part of pain that we have to carry. And when pain comes, they are looking for a church, any church that would promise them, you have the fullness of health. There will be no trouble at all. Come here. No, listen, there is trouble. And when God heals you, you even feel the healing hand of God that it is gratuitous because pain is part of the way we follow Christ, part of the way we participate in the exodus. We give glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Sunday to you. Thanks be to God. Come back to us.